What's going on guys? Dan with PC Tech Hustle coming at you with another video and today I got for you guys a little bit of a different build but I'm really excited about this one because this is my first attempt at really jumping into the Dell Optiplex era. Now I know this has kind of been covered amongst all the other bigger YouTubers and you can probably go find same equal information from them but being that my channel is about used parts or budget building or low cost to entry I wanted to really kind of explore this realm and provide some content for you guys. So what we got here is a Dell Optiplex 990 with an old 10 year old, roughly, i5 quad core at 3.1 gigahertz. So I wanna see how far we can push that, putting in some new parts that we got from Amazon and eBay to beef the system up and make it a low cost to entry gaming PC for you guys. And with low cost of entry, meaning $220 for this entire setup being the Dell Optiplex itself with all its components inside being a, actually a fully operational machine in itself right now, adding in a beefier power supply, an SSD, and a video card that can handle today's modern gaming. And by the way, guys, if you're new here and you enjoy Dell Optiplex builds like this or any other PC tech related content, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to tick the bell notification icon. That way you're informed of whenever I drop my latest content. Other than that, let's take a quick closer look at what we have here on the table and how we're gonna turn this old tired Dell Optiplex PC into a gaming PC fit for modern 2020 gaming. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so we're going to put all the parts aside here real quick and talk about the elephant in the room being this here Dell Optiplex. So let me bring it here a little closer. So I'll put up on the screen here real quick uh, what I bought. And these are pretty widely abundant on eBay. So yes, this is an eBay obviously used PC, office PC. Uh, being a 990, yeah, they're 10 years old, right? So let's open her up. So that, as we know, here is a Dell Optiplex 990. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly show you guys what's inside. This isn't going to be the full teardown build of the video yet. All right, so now we got it opened up here, and this is kind of what you get. So this is a fully operational system in its current state right now. So you could plug in and use it for you know work or school related activities and it probably would still be fine. First thing, this Dell power supply only puts out about 240 volts, about 240 volts, 240 watts across the 12 volt rail. So that isn't gonna be an option to cut it to, for gaming. So what we purchased here is a thermal take Smart 430 watt. I've used this power supply many times in my videos as you guys are probably aware of. Um, bought that off of Amazon, brand new. And we still have the shrink wrap on it. So you guys know this is a brand new part that you can go get for $38. Second here for addressing the need for power, we have GPU. So this is a used GPU that I actually acquired here locally. But uh, before you bark at that, um, this is just a place placeholder GPU since the GPU that I bought, which I'll put up here on the screen, is on its way right now. It's shipping. This is just one I had on hand for building. And it, the one that I bought actually is an XFX model, so it's about the same size. So we have something to work with and know how we're going to get in this system, which, if you're thinking, is a bit of a problem, right? So we can't quite get this card in here. We got hard drive cage giving us some issues here. So we're going to have to take that out. That's just going to have to go. Now that isn't a big deal and we'll get through that and I'll kind of explain that uh, that process and how we get make use of this extra space here which we need and since we don't need the hard drive anymore all we really need is our SSD which being our last item on the list here as a new part that we're putting into this system to get it off to the races. So here we have the an A data 240 gig Basic SSD, uh, nothing fa super fancy about this, but it's gonna be miles faster than that old 500 gig uh, mechanical drive that we have in there. So again, like I said, we're probably gonna take that out and be done with it, but replace with this. So this I got off of Amazon for $35. So total investment here for the entire system being the Dell Optiplex itself, $75 on, on eBay. Then we got the SSD for $35 on Amazon. We bought an XFX, not this particular card, but like I said, just a placeholder for $72 off eBay. Again, another good option to buy off eBay is video cards, especially 
these these models because you got your buyer protections and you can get them for a good amount cheaper than what they would cost new because there really isn't a supply for them anymore and the power supply being brand new part from Amazon. Alrighty guys, so there we have how we've hopefully got everything kind of figured out on how we're gonna turn this old Dell Optiplex PC into a PC that's fit for gaming in today's 2020 standards at relative ease and also most importantly, lowest possible cost of entry for you to get started gaming. So let's get cracking into this build and see what you can do. guys so we got it pretty well dusted out it's not absolutely perfect I might wipe it down a little bit once we're done but now we got the hard drive cage that we're gonna take care of here and upon first glance it looks like it's just held in with three rivets one two three that would need to be drilled out from the underside of the case these three rivets right here so I know that sounds like wow I mean you know if you're a first time builder or if you're really trying to just take on this type of build because you wanted something easy, this this isn't hard. So uh, basically you just kind of want to get the PC where I have it being some of the major components taken out, dusted out, and I'm gonna drill these three rivets out. And I think that should be all that holds this guy in. It looks like it kind of clips in from the back. So let's go after that and see what we encounter. Apologies guys here. Um, I thought I was recording and I, I guess I accidentally turned it off, but as you can see, we got the drive cage out and actually there was a few more rivet points that I didn't quite notice at first. So we had the original three holes that we had to drill or rivets that we had to drill here. There's also another two that kind of pinch it to the back side of the case. So you have one, two, three, four, five, you got to drill here and uh, three sixteenths or I'm sorry, 13 16 drill bit would be uh, perfect for what you need. And then there's, these are like kind of like, they're not rivets, but it's like, it's like, like somehow like welded to the, the plate or face plate of the drive cage. So you just got to drill the holes out a little larger. So you got one, two, three, four, five. So in total, you've got 10 drill points which on the front doesn't look like anything's really happened underneath. Yeah. You just missing some rivets where there normally is, but you know, the, the rigidity of the case is not compromised in any way. And I'd say if, as long as you have a drill, this is a real easy, quick little quote unquote mod to do to this PC case, which now we have all this space for our video card, which I might have to do something here to try to route that. Eh, that might actually be fine. Just run that kind of like that. But now we have a ton of space for a large video card, which was the intent here. So.
So one thing that you will definitely run into when using a full-size GPU is these SATA ports right here. They, unless you are using some right angles, which I just got by with having enough of, hopefully this one will work. I think so. But ideally you want one that will, that the angle will carry to the right. So you don't have any extra cable, cable overlap here, but that's what you want because with me, I need three because I'm going to plug back in the uh, optical drive. I've got the hard drive and I've got the SATA and I'm maxed out actually. I can't do any more. So although I have four ports because I'm using right angles, one of those ports basically has to be sacrificed for space. So know that if you're doing this, you basically, I mean, if you're just going with the SSD and you don't care about the optical drive and the hard drive, then shoot, yeah, you're, you're plenty fine. But even with any one of these ports, SATA ports here on the motherboard, if it is a cable that stands off, kind of like this one here, where there is no right angles, then your, uh, the graphics card is gonna not be mountable. You won't get it fully seated in the PCIe slot. So just something to keep in mind here. Uh, I did run into that snag and luckily I had on hand Though that's not pretty, two different shades of blue here and a black one, but at the same time, as you can see, we're not really going for a beauty award here with this PC. We're just going strictly with function. So anyway, we're gonna have to remount the video card now and we got the SATA stuff all taken care of.
Alrighty guys, so as you can see, we got the build now complete and built and operational. And we also, as you saw, went through the benchmarks, but I'll get to that in just a moment as just want to cover a quick couple things here regarding uh, some things to be aware of if you decide to go this route. Uh, what types of GPUs to possibly keep an eye out for because I didn't really go into this doing a f my full amount of research and then later found out that there was some things that I, if I would have known uh, were not going to work particularly well with this build, I would have steered away from. Uh, but I did get lucky, obviously, because I had a GPU on hand. So one thing being the video card that I originally bought was an XFX model, which for length would have been just completely fine if actually I just uh, decided to keep the, the drive cage. So on the point of the drive cage, actually, you need about 10 inches, no more than 10 inches on a GPU length to fit that in and be able to keep the drive cage. So in my case, I didn't necessarily have to remove the drive cage, but obviously did open up a lot of options for me in regards to GPU length that I could use. So if you're looking for a card that you want to use that has more than 10 inches, because that's about what you want to keep it to, don't go above 10 inches. This card here actually is a little bit over 10 and a half inches, being the MSI Gaming uh, RX 570. The XFX one back there on my folding bench actually is just a hair under 10 inches, so it would fit lengthwise, but then I ran into another problem being that it had a back plate which gave it a little extra height uh, requirement, and with the Optiplex 990s in particular, you are millimeters away from the RAM slots, so even a video card with a minimal back plate likely isn't gonna work. So I got two recommendations in regards to this. Get a GPU that is under 10 inches, and that way you'll be able to clear the drive cage. Secondly, get a GPU that doesn't have a backplate. So there's, there's several out there, and I think the best one that you can get is one that I've actually featured in some of my builds before being an MSI Armor card if you're going with the RX 570. So this build could be either really, really simple, and I would say the easiest way to, to make it extremely simple on yourself would be to keep the hard drive cage so that way you don't have to drill it out. Uh, get you a video card that's under or around 10 inches, nothing above 10 inches so that way it'll slot right in and you'll still be able to retain the cage. And then uh, you're, you're basically good to go, you just have to buy obviously the bigger power supply. Now you can get by with not going with an SSD, though I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Uh, it's definitely going to show its age if you're using a mechanical drive. But if you want to save yourself 30 bucks, if you're really in a tight bind and you want to get this build under $200, which if you didn't include that SATA drive, it would be under $200 based on the prices that uh, I've shown in this video, then that's doable. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. I would at least definitely go for the, the SSD just to get you a, kind of the more snappy feel. So lastly, the benchmarks, as I mentioned, I want to just briefly talk about. There's obviously some caveats to that too. So all my benchmarks, I typically run at high settings, 1080p high, regardless of my bills, just to have baselines. But for something like this, definitely I would steer away from that. You wanna kinda of tailor the graphical settings to your build. So with our build here, obviously, it's definitely showing its age. It's a 10-year-old processor and it's bottlenecking big time. So at a 1080p high setting, it's not a realistic graphical setting to expect with something like this. Now that doesn't mean that this isn't a system that is employable. So again, if, you know, the idea being that you're someone that's looking to spend probably in the range of 200 to $250, you're not gonna be able to get much in terms of a high-end gaming system. Hon honestly, you, you th that's just buying maybe a processor these days if you're going brand new, if you're lucky. But knowing that you've got minimal investment going here, you tone the settings down to what's more realistic for a build like this and what i'm talking about there is capping your frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate taking the graphical settings down to a low to medium and you'll notice a big time enjoyable improvement experience now you're not going to be getting 150 plus frames or anything like that but you're definitely going to have something that you can just go have fun with and that's the whole purpose of this video and this build so my recommendation is yes i would recommend this if if you have a finite amount of money and you don't want to spend anything more than $200 or $250 or so, yes, you can go grab an Optiplex, 
throw in a couple parts and off to the races you go. You don't even need to honestly know much about system building other than I guess how to throw in a video card and how to replace a power supply because again as mentioned this system didn't need to have its drive cage drilled out. I didn't need to refresh the thermal paste. I didn't even have to remove the cooler. You know, that, those are things that you don't necessarily have to do. So all in all, yes, I recommend if you're willing to spend only about two to 250, but if you have the two to 250 to spend, but you can save a little more, put that more towards something that you see in some of my other builds where maybe you can go find some used parts on some Ryzen deals and really get you a much, much more better performing in modern system. If you guys are considering doing this build, make sure you check the description below that I'll have some links for as mentioned and some of those being affiliate links to Amazon that help give a little bit of a kickback to the channel. It helps me keep producing content like this for you guys. And before you guys go, make sure you do the YouTube thing, right? Give me a like if you enjoyed this content. Give me a comment. I'm curious, did you stumble on this video because you're doing some research on Dell Optiplex builds and you found my video as an example? Hopefully a great example so that way you're able to learn something and go off and do it on your own. Other than that, make sure you check out a couple of these videos before you go. Thanks for tuning into this one. I appreciate your time and I will catch you guys in the next one.